Hello and welcome back to the Good, the Bad and the Ugly Show's YouTube channel. Today I'm talking about McVicker. I first became aware of The Who at the age of 12 when I found a cassette tape at a car boot sale. It was this one, The Story of The Who. I found it in a box of tapes and thought, I've heard of that band, I'm sure my brother and my dad have mentioned them before. So I grabbed it and took it home, put it in my Walkman and... Uh, yeah, very, very pleasantly surprised. Very good band, very good album. Uh, obviously a great band, as goes without saying. But a very good album. Um, it starts off with uh, My Generation and goes straight through, like, Tommy and Quadrophenia and all that kind of stuff. And it ends at The Who by Numbers, which, for most sort of pure, purest Who fans, that's a pretty good place to end. Because uh, that was the last album that featured Keith Moon in his prime and the rest of the band kind of doing what they wanted to do kind of around the time of Pete Townsend's disillusionment with The Who. Who Are You was a very turbulent album anyway, and Keith Moon's health had already started to deteriorate by then. Uh, it had affected his drumming. Um, Pete Townsend's disillusionment with The Who as well was very kind of evident in some of the songwriting. I think Who Are You was a good album, but for most fans, I think, up until about The Who by Numbers, is it can be known as a kind of cut-off point. But anyhow, one day, while going through some of my dad's stuff, me and my brother came across this album, McVicker. We had no idea what McVicker was, or who McVicker was, or anything about it. All we know, all we knew was that Was Adultery was on the album cover, and uh, Jeff Wayne had something to do with it, because his name came up in the credits. Now, Jeff Wayne is the guy known for the uh, War of the Worlds album that came out in the 70s, 1978. So um, he produced that, and he produced McVicker as well. So, McVicker, it's a strange album. It says The Who Films Presentation. So The Who released the film, but Roger Daltrey released the album as a solo album, even though it clearly states that Pete Townsend plays guitar on it, John Entwistle plays bass, and Kenny Jones does the drumming. So, um, is that a Daltrey album, or is that just a Who album? Being the weird, geeky guy that I am, I like to make my own What If albums. I've made a bunch of Beatles solo albums, I've sort of pieced them together from that year, and put What If the Beatles had released an album in 1972, this is what it might have sounded like, that kind of thing. It's for nerds, really. But uh, here is my front cover for uh, The Who's McVicker, a What If The Who had released McVicker album, where I've rearranged the tracks slightly to uh, kind of go with that as well. If you know what you know, you know what you know, and all that stuff. So we're going to take a little run through the uh, track listing anyway. So we'll, we'll go for mine here. Um, Free Me was a very good song. That was a Roger Daltrey uh, hit single. Good video to it as well. Could have been a very good Who song though, I think. That could have been a good Who single in 1980. I think that would have done them some good. The second song, Escape Part 1, much like Escape Part 2. They're both instrumental tracks. The early instrumental tracks on this album. And uh, they're kind of weird. I mean, one of them, I think it was Part 2, sounds sounds like Jeff Wayne. It sounds like something from War of the Worlds, definitely. The other one sounds like it could have been done by Focus or Jeff Tull. It has that kind of fluty thing to it, which I quite like. Uh, bitter and Twisted, like the song of a psychopath or sociopath. Um, it's very angry, very kind of paranoid. I like it. It's a good song if you're pissed off and you think, oh, I want a song that's going to kind of you know match my mood. Here we go. Uh, Just a Dream Away, it's pretty good. Kind of depressing about, you know, a guy who thinks he's wasted his life in a cell, that kind of thing. White City Lights, much of the same, really, thinking about what your friends and stuff are doing and, and you're lying there, you know. You, you brought this on yourself, man. Uh, My Time Is Gonna Come, that's a good song. That's about kind of paranoia as well, and it's also about kind of fighting and angry and saying, well, one day someone's going to kill me. Well, you know, let them, whatever. Um, There we go. Bring us on to Waiting for a Friend. That's a very good song. It's quite kind of Stonesy-ish. I think that would have made a really good Who single as well, but wasn't to be. Now, that brings us on to Without Your Love, which is a bit of an interesting one. Because it was originally a track on this album, With Love, a compilation album by various artists released by Pete Townsend in 1976. So this is a good four years before the McVicker soundtrack, and it features the song Without Your Love, um, which was by Billy Nicholas. Where is it? Here he is. Billy Nicholas. Billy Nichols. I keep saying Nicholas by mistake. I, I can't help it. It's like I can't see the word Nichols. So, Billy Nichols with Pete Townsend. So, Pete Townsend helped write this song. So, that gives Pete Townsend a writing credit on the album as well. Without Your Love was a very good song. Uh, the Billy Nichols version is also very good. 
because he released it himself on his own album in 1977, just a year later. Uh, it's very good. His, his version of it, his original version of it, him and Pete Townsend wrote it. I like it. It's on YouTube, so go ahead and find it and play it. Also, this album is pretty hard to find as well. Pete Townsend released a bunch of these throughout the 70s. They are a love letter to Maya Barber, who uh, he was a fan of and a follower of. That is probably. Uh, but yeah, if you can find these albums, they're worth looking out for. And that brings us to the title track of the album, the final track of the album, McVicker. Final track of my album, anyway. I think this is a very good song as well. Um, I'm not sure if it was a hit for Daltrey at the time. I don't think it was. I think only really Free Me did anything. But McVicker was uh, very good as well. It could have been a good Who song, I think. Um, you can hear all the members playing on it and all these songs. So, yeah. The film isn't too bad either. And not the worst thing Daltrey ever did, by any means. So, if you're a Who fan and you're unaware of McVicker or the soundtrack or the film, they're definitely both worth checking out. I just thought I'd do a little video about it because I've always figured that, um, always thought that McVicker should be a Who album rather than a Daltrey album. But there you go. I guess in the general scheme of things, it doesn't really matter. Well, unless you're a nerd who loves the Who anyway. In all honesty, the reason why I probably love this album so much is because I had it on cassette tape as a child, I would slap it in my Walkman and I would listen to it on train journeys and long bus journeys. And this is the, these are the days before MP3 players and all that stuff, so you couldn't just listen to thousands of tracks on shuffle. You basically had like two tapes. And if you're on like a seven to like ten hour journey, then you'd have those two tapes. You'd listen to them over and over and over again out of sheer boredom. You'd end up becoming quite overly familiar with these albums so yeah mcvicker was a uh a tape that i took around quite a lot as a kid and listened to uh, quite a lot on train journeys so i think that's why i have such a nostalgic love for this album that was my quick review on the who album mcvicker the soundtrack to the 1980 film um don't forget to subscribe please and uh like the videos and make comments. Put comments in the bottom there. Tell me what you think. Tell me if I'm wrong or you think I'm wrong or you know more about it. Because to be honest, this is not an easy album to find information about. There's a Wikipedia page. doesn't tell you a great amount. doesn't really tell you who's even playing on the songs, I believe. Uh, I might be wrong about that as well. But um, yeah, check out further videos that we do. We'll be doing lots of stuff, lots of music, lots of film, lots of books, lots of toys. We're really into the media. We're into nostalgia mainly and we're into all kinds of stuff. So uh, if you have any funny ideas for videos as well, please let us know on that. So hit the subscribe button and uh, toodle pip.